My name's Kit, and I have never played a Bioware RPG. As a fair weather gamer, uh, my RPG days pretty much fell by the wayside by the time I was into my mid-teens, I suppose. Um, I was a big fan of Final Fantasies 7 through to 10. Blitzball. Got to love a bit of Blitzball. Yeah, I am aware of Bioware RPGs, um, and it's mainly through basically my friend's love of the Mass Effect uh, franchise. I've heard they're, um, you know, big on plot, big on ensemble casts, lots of voice acting, lots of uh, story beats to hit, and generally probably more complex than the average narrative being weaved by a game. Also, everyone just bangs on about how much they love Garrus Vicarian. Gonna wait for a bit. I'm in the middle of some calibration. So, as Glasshouse Games self-professed, are we self-professed? I feel like people know we're the Bioware experts at this point. I think so. I uh, I think I've outed myself a couple of times as a Bioware nerd. I hate that word. You have the credentials. Not only I do. Not only have you played all the games, you've read the tie-in novels. The really Look terrible tie in novel. Real evidence. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> An the actual hard good. copy book. It's very good. It's flawed, but it's good. <laughs> if there was if there was a Bioware romance to be at the top of that shrine, who would it be? Who would be the one you'd light a little candle for? Oh it's a toss up between Isabella and Basta Lashan. Whoa, I think those are some those are some those are some big choices. It's either probably Liara in the Mass Effect trilogy, I think so, or yeah. Sarah from <laughs> Dragon Age Inquisition. Let's see your your well fit. The first one, the second one. <laughs> she she is trash, but like that's my thing apparently. I mean, the fact that I've even brought that up, I think like I think tells you a little bit about what people expect of Bioware and like what defines Bioware RPGs. And if we were to distill their essence down into something and what makes a Bioware RPG a Bioware RPG in particular, because um, Bioware has been going a long time, you know, like I mean, two decades, three decades, like Bioware has been going a long time so, making yeah. RPGs and stuff. If we're to pick a defining characteristics, um, I think romance is definitely a part of it. Um, I think like for sure and. I think that one is probably why Bioware RPGs... I, I don't think it was always the case. I think if you go back to, you know, CRPGs like Baldur's Gate and stuff, Neverwinter Nights really started. I think romance isn't really in the picture, really. Um, the things that define it then, which I think are still true, are the, the narrative focus. Um, I think Bioware RPGs are always about the... I mean, the, the crux of it is dialogue choices, right? Like dialogue choices branching storylines i mean to the point where you know th we've got the whole pattern with the dialogue wheel you know that's such a big part of uh, especially like modern bioware yeah. rpgs for sure we talk about that in an episode of the ghc show you should absolutely check out about patterns um but yeah like yeah the branching the dialogue like thing i mean i think that the dialogue wheel is like pretty iconic it, you know really cements that but yeah big narrative focus our game's always about narrative um and then tied into with that, um, particular is your companions. You know who makes up your party, your your friends, your relationships with people. I don't. It's not always the like people in your squad necessarily. It's probably it's broader than that. But um, but yeah, definitely your relationships with people probably are this big factor. Probably the most defining thing of their games now, if anything. I think so. In terms of how it helps to build the world, and we will get into this later on, but, you know, sometimes the worlds can feel a little bit empty and then the characters help to kind of, you know, add on to the richness uh, that, you know, they might have missed out in the original literal worlds in terms of its environments and whatnot. Obviously, there's shades of other games. Like, I think Final Fantasy has always been defined by, you know, the party and you've got your friends and stuff. But I think the difference is mm. by where you create your own character or your version of a sort of predefined character. So there's a sort of more personable. I think people have a real deep attachment to the characters in Bioware because it feels like your relationship, your friendship. Um, and I think that goes double when it comes to romance that we mentioned. Um, I think... I think romance is ominously one of the big like selling points of Bioware RPGs like even back when because 
yeah i mean if you type in like character names into youtube i think the like the first or second choice is always like romance scene i think it is a cornerstone of bioware games and i think there is this kind of tendency especially nowadays to kind of hand wave uh the importance of like the queer romances in bioware games because you know we've gotten much better choices over the years but you know we were even talking about this earlier on like we grew up in a time where it was illegal to discuss queerness in schools and so seeing characters like isabella like that was literally groundbreaking you know yeah i think like i mean my i've talked about it elsewhere but like my first like real exposure to queer media came through jade empire and like if you go by watching now jade empire is very quaint when it comes to queer romance but like at the time it felt like this forbidden taboo thing i was like because you know i just played this rpg and then out of nowhere there was gay romance i was like shit my parents can't see this like you know and I think for a generation, I don't know what the la- I don't know how much that will have this lasting impact in terms of like newer generations coming to buy rare RPGs. I don't know how much that'll be defining, but I think that queerness is definitely responsible for why buy rare RPGs are lauded and cherished the way they are. Because I think for a generation like us, though that was like significant queer media exposure at a time when there wasn't a lot else around, not just in games, but just across the board. It was hard to find that stuff, and here was this blockbuster game you could pick up that had these romances you know especially in a way that felt quite normalized if i you know remember 2011 when dragon age 2 came out you know people have so much to say about you know player sexuality and stuff and you know just kind of defaulting to that thing but at the time 10 years ago like it was a huge deal to be able to romance a character as you know as a female character for me anyway um and you know has gone on to really solidify my identity and i know it's the case for several other people as well so when we go into picking our candidates we've got we've got a few options that we've whittled down um Mm -hmm. for what we think are like the uh, ones the ones that we have to get out of the way because byra didn't always make (laughs) sexy rpgs they once upon a time they made mech sims like shattered steel and like i mean i don't even know what mdk is it's like a third person shooter at action adventure thing there's a there's a talking dog with guns and forearms like just just go just go look at that weirdness and make up for yourself but we are here today to just to, to pick out not just the best bioware rpg or the most approachable one but the one that sets you up to to play other bioware rpgs to have a knowledge of what the formula is and what you can come to expect so those ones are out the window as a bioware fan i didn't even know about these games i was like what on earth are these <laughs> but i think we we have a few candidates we we whittled down to a, a, a few potentials um that are worth running through and i think if, if anyone follows me and knows what i'm into they will not be surprised that i made a case for the original mass effect which I mean, besides just being the first installment in that trilogy, which obviously is the big cornerstone of Bioware's like whole library, um, I think the Mass Effect, first Mass Effect has a really strong story, really good set of characters. It's the it's the, it's the introduction to that world, um, and there's just a real something very special about that first game. And I think, yeah, Mass Effect's a pretty good place to start. But I know you have some concerns i do i think for you know our dear gentle kit i think the combat will trip him up i think one thing that you always say and you've said it in like pieces you've written and on twitter all the time because you were always talking about the first mass effect is that even though the combat is bad there isn't that much of it um but it's still not great (laughs) it's really rough like no even like it, it was rough at the time it's rough now i just no (laughs) <laughs> um, but, but so there's no disparagement on Shay. Dragon Age Inquisition was very much my left field choice for a potential introduction. I think its strengths are it has like it's self-contained relatively. I think it does a reasonable job of. I mean, it definitely drops you in the middle of something, and I think that's actually a strength. I think it just drops you in this event, and you just get swept up in that, and you've just got to deal with it. And it, it's it's a pretty strong like just little the opening act is definitely far over long but the um but that little introduction's fine and i think dragon age inquisition has one of the best you know we talked about characters being a draw of these games and i think inquisition has maybe the best ensemble cast of the games just not just for size but also and variety but also because i think those characters you have you tend to have really interesting relationships with them there's a lot mm. of friction it's not just your bug friends it's like no you have these sort of weird places of friction i think of like characters like um vivienne and um black wall yeah those characters that sort of have their own deal going on and 
there's a lot going on there yeah i mean and there's another yet another common theme is you know the opening not being that impactful in mass effect 2 even though it is if you're familiar it does have that kind of oof like let's get straight to the meat of the action i think that doesn't mean a lot if you are coming from having not played a mass effect game before like it's impactful to me because you know you spend ages with those characters for so long uh, in the first game so coming into the second one it is really impactful but not if you aren't familiar um so sadly even though mass effect 2 is one of my favorite games and was a choice it's not the choice we're going with the one that we sailed on the one that we think might be the best introduction point is uh dragon age 2 which i was very surprised when you agreed you were very surprised i was i used it's logic not a good game. deduction and reasoning i used <laughs> science to get here okay like there was real i'm i'm a very impartial and unbiased you know i think um it's i think true. there's a lot i mean there's definitely a lot to criticize about dragon age 2 like mm. it's a flawed game like um it is repetitive it's clearly of it was clearly made you know there's lots written out there about the trouble production and like it was clearly made sort of on the side between like mass effect 2 and 3 um while they were gearing up for dragon age inquisition on the horizon as well and it it definitely feels rough in terms of the lack of polish and stuff um, but I will say, it's not as ugly looking a game as Dragon Age Origins. Dragon Age Origins is some real ugly fantasy it's world. It's like, brown cow stunning. It is very brown. It's not a <laughs> <laughs> good looking game. Dra- Dragon Age, slap that in the box. Dragon Age Origins, brown cow stunning. <laughs> Put that there. This feels like a very weird setup because it is our choice. But in terms of the three pillars that we mentioned, in terms of like narrative focus, because Dragon Age 2 is a much smaller game in scope and scale, you do have it where it's strangely more focused in like the big kind of the big set pieces that you get in Dragon Age Origins and Inquisition don't really matter and there isn't a sense of continuity that you need which is the issue that we had with trying to recommend mass effect 2 it has a very strong cast of companions which again another very strong pillar of bioware rpgs and there are romances for days what's not to like i mean apart from all the other stuff we mentioned yeah that's the one we're gonna get kept to play is dragon age 2 electric boogaloo no (laughs) Ken would say it if he was here he He would would say it he really would oh god do some magic do some stuff is it Mm -hmm. it looks so cool i'm gonna do stuff with my star cool yeah, they they, yeah. they really they really like with this one and it carries over into Inquisition. There was a real effort to like, how can we make Medjis cool? Yeah. They're like, what if they do all this like martial arts like posturing and stuff? But I really like it. Actually. Yeah, I think they've achieved it. I was gonna say, have we gotten spells at this point? You can use you can click down on your uh, quick bar. You can hit one on the keyboard. What's a quick bar? You get to you've got you can be like. I see what this is. Diplomatic, or uh-huh. you can be a jester. Yeah. Be kind of humorous. Or yeah. you can just be a dick. I'm probably going to be a wisecracking we'll be lucky and mage. Run out of darkspawn. <laughs> Here they come. <laughs> Shall I give them a taste of my blade? Yeah, I'm lazy. All yours, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Woof! Was not joking. I Tasty. know. <laughs> uh, How's it oh, there, there we go. go. Okay. Oh, now we in. get no. Yeah. And we got some yes, yes. So you need you need to get your mage like oh, well, uh, and you can, like dragon like w- one liners in order. You know, like shoot a winter's grasp at them and be like cool off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> chill out, mate. Chill out. There you go. There you go. You yeah, go. I nailed it. I feel like this thing's on my tail. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. So this is our first eponymous dragon, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. It is it is the age. It's the age thereof. That's not what really happened. Oh. Does that not match the story? I was playing a flashback. Seeker. I feel slightly cheated. I'm not interested. Not even a flashback. Fantasy flashback. Embellished yeah. flashback. Yeah. So what makes? Let me guess. 
Your precious Chantry's fallen to pieces and put the entire world on the brink of war. What's Chantry? And you need the one like a church. person who could help you oh, yeah. put it back together. Because yeah. they chant all the time. The champion was at the heart of it when it all began. The chant pian. If no. you can't point me to <laughs> tell me You tried, and that's, you know. that's all I like that you vetoed your own <laughs> thing. <laughs> it means making your character. Oh, here, here we go. go. Here we go, the real stuff. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. that that's just to adjust your power yeah. trait. Go, you want to go back to appearance. <laughs> no, I want to get the top of the head going. <laughs> 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 this is better than the character creator, sorry. Oh, look at that. Can you do like a real tiny pencil tap? Oh, the mutton chops! Oh wow. my god, look at the state of him. He looks like a haystack that was given life. <laughs> oh, the first, now, the first one you went now in for. Deep into shorter chips to territory. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. You need a beanie for them. <laughs> well, no, but the beanie is. <laughs> yeah, I've tried. <laughs> I've tried. Yeah, look at that hair. This is the beaniest that hairdo clearance. I could give him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't right, wait to see those Latin cutscenes. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at this lad. For the moment, make us save us. We've Good thing Hawk's all. tall. Almost nobody realizes about it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that bald patch. It's oh. very prominent in this third person. Visible view, from space. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's really weird that you give your character a name and even the label over their head is not that name. It's just Hawk. Yeah, it's just Hawk. That's very strange. But we, deep down, we know he's called Jayhawk, and that's yeah. what really matters. What's gonna happen here? <gasps> Yikes. Oh, shit! That's, uh... <laughs> you don't bounce back from one of those, do you? No. We got a banter answer here, no. Shame. Uh, no, I mean, your sister just died, so... No. <laughs> uh, this is harsh. Pull yourself together. So not that. Well, I mean, unless you is that unless you think Jayhawk is that kind of no nonsense. No, I think he's got some banter and some compassion. Good. I want my daughter. How could you let her charge off like that? What banter would you offer in that situation? No, I'm glad there wasn't any. It would have been incongruous <laughs> if there was. But I might have clicked it if there was. You you know what you should have said? You should have been like, maybe she's just trolling us. Ew. <laughs> Um, could she get crushed by a troll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody? No, no! No, I was there, Sam. I was there. You were there? <laughs> Got we it. were all there? We were all there. <laughs> oh, look. This is a dragon from last time. The eponymous <gasps> dragon. I, I assume there's some, one singular dragon in this game. In this game? We, we, we cannot confirm nor deny the quantity of dragons in this dragon age. Panther. <laughs> Impressive. Where'd you learn how to turn into a dragon? Is that not enough? <laughs> That's good. I want the first bit of it. <laughs> be a dragon. That, that, that looks useful. <laughs> made a laugh. Uh, the investigate stuff just kind of gives you more, I guess, context. Like you can ask her about like herself and stuff. Do one. Ah oh, no. Yeah. Oh, boring. <laughs> boring. 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 Oh, oh wait. Oh. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you got a decision on your hands. It's not. This is some heavy shit right yeah. here. Will I euthanize your husband for you? Yeah, you know. <clears throat> I'm tempted to take it on myself. Is that the kind of man J Hawk has? Carries other people's burdens this on his bald patch? Playthrough. I'm not going to influence this decision. I would like to think it's what everyone needs to happen and. Jay Walk. Jay Hawk is stepping up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Abby. This has to be done. Well, that is some ugly looking barge. <laughs> no, no, to, no to rock anyone's boat here, but. Oh, no. Sam, you are firing them out today. Yeah, just. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. <laughs> so Very useful have... spell. Mm. First aid spell. Yeah. Now you have to do the same for your brother. Why are they all so 
Why is there so much antagonism in this family? Yeah. Well, Carver's a dick. Like, that's his thing, is that he, <laughs> he like, he sort of sees you as his, his rival. He's, He's like, jealous of your fucking hair and beard. That's what it is. <laughs> Who isn't? You want in, talk to Captain Ewald. I'm just here to keep you refuse from climbing the walls. Refuse? That is some tone you're taking, buddy. Listen. Well, you can just go in. Yeah. He's not doing very well. Mr. Right. Garson, right? <laughs> Fuck that one. Oh, you flaming blighter. We're not staying in this pit. You flaming blighter. Kirkwall has no more room. It's Sean Bean, isn't it? The ship's already... The city is full. <laughs> Surely there's a bit of extra room for the pretty people. <laughs> With that hairstyle. Blade. Chill out, lads. I love how this guy looks like he's just been standing there the whole time and now he's just splattered with blood. <laughs> just getting blood splattered constantly. Girl, the years haven't been kind to you. Woof! Says the lad in his fucking leather vest and check shirt. The blight, your husband. Dead. I figured you'd pretty much. Dressed up like a fisherman's dead dog. Calm down, son. Oh, Gamlin. We came too late. <laughs> no, the years haven't been kind to you. My <laughs> husband died. <laughs> like... <laughs> I mean, the years haven't been kind to her. She looks amazing, though. When you two next come to the office, I'm saying that. <laughs> Dear Shay, the years have not been kind to you. I was hoping to grease some palms, but the night commander's been cracking down. We're going to need more grease. My tender bio. <laughs> <laughs> Surely for I talked to my contacts and I found some people who might be willing to pay your way into the city. The catch is you and your brother will have to work off the debt for a year. That's ages. A year? It's the best I could do. Trust me when I say a bunch of refugees won't get a better option anywhere. Gamlin's else. a total grifter. 100%, right? Get get my nephew involved in indentured servitudes. <laughs> That's the way forward. What did Gammon get for it? Something shit. Yeah. So you're selling us into indentured servitude. What's your idea, Myron? Your business is done. <laughs> <laughs> now clear off. I want I want that guy in the team. Hire yeah. Myron. You catch more flies with honey. But Gamlin's bullshit could work too. <laughs> well, he did get us into the city, right? What else? I get a feeling do? like Hawk sat coming up with that one for a little bit beforehand. You know, like, oh, oh, fuck, I've, I've got to use this line. <laughs> so good. Look at those leather pants. I know. Very shiny. <gasps> Pickpocketed. Hi. Whoa there. Is that Ganondorf? You take every coin out of your pockets <laughs> just by smiling. So, Kit, you've done an hour, two hours of Dragon Age 2. You've played the opening, which, you know, Shay and I felt was a pretty, pretty strong opening introduction to Bioware. How did you feel about it? How did you get on with a couple of hours of Dragon Age 2, having played no Bioware RPG ever? Actually, got on with the mechanics much more than I was expecting to. Whenever I hear the words or the letters RPG, in that order, I think complicated immediately. And with this, I can imagine there is quite uh, a steep learning curve with it, and it probably gets very detailed and very complex. But uh, moving around, interacting with things, fighting, all at the beginning of the game at least, felt simple enough that you could kind of just forget about what button to press and how to do it, and you could just get on with concentrating on the story crafting the manner in which you were progressing and uh that differs in some games where all you're really worried about is um how to progress for instance um me and you Shay, pay, played maquette and that was all it was was like oh how do you just get to the next bit mm -hmm. but with this it was like no how do you want to get to the next bit we'll be go we'll be getting to the next bit whenever you want to how do you want to do it? And that's that's probably the bit about it that struck me hardest at the beginning. So you got to you got to customize 
your hawk you got a bit of player customization on the go um and this is a bit limited compared to bioware rpgs but we had fun with that did you did you like that was that was that a pl- plus for you yeah i did um i i think you know the, the customization whilst it adds a bit of depth to it i think the best my favorite bit about it was how you could sort of like choose your backstory a bit as well and how that fed into the game um All yeah right. it was fun to give my guy a bold cut with a bold patch it was but i think what was interesting was when uh you know you had a selection of of backstories that sort of formed your character and then what was nice about that is it fed into how you wanted to answer questions later on as well and so it all kind of fed into this quite cohesive um it just put you in a in a in a vibe of the game that that felt quite strong and quite unique it's interesting that you say that because um obviously like we said in our deliberation at the beginning you know this is a kind of hotly contested game in that it wasn't really received well but i think it does really embody the um the kind of role-playing mechanics quite well i think especially for a newbie um and i think it's a testament that you know you got on with it pretty well despite not being a gamer as you said yourself you know not that i'm a gamer <laughs> please give it to me so have we is this a success or you've a definitely failure? piqued my interest none of this has been um something that pushes me away from the genre uh i'm not fully persuaded but then that's not the remit of this as we uh kind of like <laughs> um alluded to earlier so um yes basically i think you can consider it a success uh but you would need to give me the time to complete this one and also probably do a Mass Effect because I <laughs> because I expected it and now I need it. 